intro for Flying Cod. Anyways, Flying Cod was originally going to be Koi Fish, but when I was looking up inspiration for Koi Fish, I don't know, I don't remember how I got to this point. I think I was just looking up cool fish because I didn't really want to do a Koi Fish. I thought it was too basic. I just saw fish with wings and I was like, holy, oh my God. That's amazing. I want to draw a fish with wings. And if in case you don't know, I am obsessed with birds. Uh, they are my favorite pet type and one of my favorite animals. Uh, maybe if I ever do a stuffed animal tour or show off all my stuffed animals, you'll see how many bird stuffed animals I have. But anyways, flying cod. So let's pull up the sketches I have. Not a whole lot. Again, I was very rushed for time. But here she is. You can see me figuring out the pose, the colors. Flying cod are mostly found around Barbados, so I use Barbados streetwear as well as uh, the average Barbados person as the inspiration for her. And yeah, I think she turned out great. She is the one that I had to do the most digital editing on because there were some choices that I did not particularly like, and I'll talk some more about that throughout the video and the outro, I'm sure. But... I'm excited for you guys to see the process since I did a little bit of extra uh, work on this one in terms of background and stuff. So I'm excited for you to see. So let's uh, head on over. So I was getting ready to film flying fish today. Uh, and I noticed the lighting was kind of whack and it got really loud. That's because it's hailing now. It was just raining a second ago. Now it's hailing. Um, so that's cool. It's getting all over our furniture. <laughs> kind of hoping I can catch a big old, like, thunder on camera because it was pretty loud earlier. But yeah, I'm going to try and film flying fish today. I literally just filmed the rain outside like two minutes ago. <laughs> now you can barely see the mountains. Holy Sorry. I'm gonna yell. But now you can break. Zeus is upset. There's hail everywhere. Dude, our furniture is soaked, probably. Well, good thing I didn't go and try and sit outside. Welcome back, your favorite part of the videos. Voiceover George. Yay! I'm getting a little bit closer to the mic to make sure it picks me up. But anyways, let's get into it. So, first and foremost, I'd like to warn everybody, this video is kind of a mess, like I said, or like I say later. I was feeling under the weather while I filmed this, and that's because I just got my second dose of the Moderna vaccine. So, I was not feeling great. There's a lot of mistakes that uh, could have been avoided. <laughs> but it's fine, it's, it's not too terrible. And here I am, going in and putting in the pose. Now... I learned the hard way and I was rushing, so I give myself a little bit of leeway. Don't forget to put a line of action, not just in your thumbnail sketch, but also on the page <laughs> that you're going to put the finished sketch on because otherwise you might run out of room. It had been a while since I had used the full extent of the page like this, so I forgot that, uh, you know, you can run out of room. So you'll see it later in the video, I definitely push the pose to the very edges of the paper. And I was really satisfied with the way I did the pose at first with the arms back and with the face. And like I said, this is based off of a few internet references, but the problem was I did not push myself enough when it came to the way the face was laid out, the way I did the arms. So I do end up changing it, which is unfortunate because I do want to challenge myself with more difficult angles, but you know, maybe in the future. This one was just not the take. I should have given myself a lot more time than I did to complete this piece because it was a little more labor intensive than the others. But it's fine, I still think the end product, the edited end product turned out fine. I am not super satisfied with the traditional version just because I talk about it a little later, the way I did the face, I um, was not happy with it. But, you know, life goes on. Here I am putting in the clothes, so I do also mention later that, or maybe before, can't quite remember <laughs> that she is based off of Barbados women and in Barbados they wear a lot of loose fitting clothes with floral patterns so that's what I went for for the top 
something very loose fitting and flowy and nice. I didn't want it to be too constricting. I kind of wanted it also to be loose because she's going to be jumping out of the water a lot, which, you know, you don't want. Or maybe you do want something tight fitting so it's not going everywhere. But I just wanted it to communicate that feeling of freedom, you know, without constriction. So she's not wearing anything super tight, basically, besides a few pieces of jewelry. And here I am getting into that part of the face that I was talking about earlier that I'm not satisfied with. And I go ahead and completely change the face shape just because I, in the moment, couldn't figure out how to lay everything out to make it look good. And I was more focused on it looking good than looking technically, like I technically challenged myself. Which, you know, whether that's good or bad is up for debate. It's very difficult when you're trying to make a product to sell. Okay, lighting's better. Rainstorm's over. Uh, so, I'm on a time crunch, because I, 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 got, I got my second vax a few days ago, so I've been like sick. Uh, so it's the day I'm supposed to be posting this is when I'm finishing it. So hopefully I'll post it tomorrow. So I just went and did the second pass off screen. I pushed it a lot with like the edges. I'm gonna fix that in post. But right now we're gonna clean it up and do the line art, so yeah. All right, and we're back. Like I said, I had skipped the second pass sketching phase. I was, again, sick as hell. So it was a little bit difficult. Here you can see that the camera is shifting and that's because I had forgotten to tighten up my crane neck that I used to film with my phone. So you'll see that a couple time, a couple more times. I know it's annoying, please bear with me. I didn't really have time to check back on my filming to make sure that it wasn't doing stupid stuff like this. But I'm just going through with a kneaded eraser and lightening up the sketch so that I can put some lines over it. And just going right in. Sometimes I'll go through and re-darken up the sketch if I lightened it too much, but in this case it looks like I was pretty confident, so. It also lets you be a little more loose when you have the uh, lighter lines, since you're not trying too hard to match exactly what you drew in the sketch. Ears on my headphones knock the camera around. I'm so stupid. I gotta be careful. Careful I was not, because it happens again. Anyways, <laughs> I'm doing those little bulbous eyelashes like I did for the last one. I just think it's fun. Nothing crazy. So job-wise, in merfolk society, I'd like to think that flying cod or something akin to transporters, kind of like a whale shark except it's more items like mail or packages or anything that requires them to travel large distances or go above the water, you know, carriers, news people, anything like that, I think they would excel at. And here it goes again. Like I said, I'm kind of stupid. <laughs> but yeah, I, th I think they'd be great at anything that requires long modes of travel because, you know, they can fly, so they could probably go faster. I don't know. <laughs> I'd also think that just by nature, they'd be very active fish and very excited isn't the word, but energetic because, you know, it takes a lot of energy to jump out of the water especially if you want to catch wind, so probably be very adventurous. I wouldn't say necessarily live life on the edge, but they're more willing to take risks than, say, say the whale shark, who can be a little bit more tame and docile and content with staying down in the ocean. You could tell throughout these videos I got a lot more confident in my line work because I don't need to go back as many times. I only ever go back to thicken it up for line density's sake to add some intrigue. I did forget her gills, <laughs> and I used the excuse that the jewelry's in the way, which would be terrible, right? That'd probably choke her and kill her, but we'll just say it's breathable jewelry and you don't see it. The flying cod has a lot of fins, like a lot of fins, so I had to find a way to incorporate all the different fins and still make it look good so i have the traditional you know side fins and then i added some up top and then 
I have two back fins, which are the wings. Then I have the arm fins and the big tail. I thought, you know, I got them all in there. I am so sorry for that loud noise. If you can hear that, I guess the trash is coming to pick everything up now. Of course, they were supposed to do it yesterday, but they're gonna wait until I'm recording a voiceover to loudly grab the trash from my neighborhood. I hate it here. <laughs> Once we move, I wanna get an office space away from the street so that I can do things without worry of outside noise and record. But the problem is a lot of offices and houses, they're considered offices because they don't have windows. And I need vitamin D or I will shrivel up and die if I'm in a room with no windows all day every day. So, anyways, that's enough of a tangent. I'm sure I'll talk more about that once it comes time to buy a house, because I will be making a house hunting video. All right, and like I said, we're back. A nice taped up version. Let me adjust the camera's tiny bit. I just gotta do some color testing. We shall be ready to go. Um, I'm waiting on my oven to heat up so I've made some pizza rolls because I'm shaking because I haven't eaten all day. This is a bit of a rush job, so I'm not super happy with her, but you know, life goes on. So let's get into some painting. I'm getting a lot better at those cutoffs and making sure that I'm watching the timeline go down. That way I don't talk over previous stated audio, which is pretty cool. I'm feeling like a pro. <laughs> Hopefully eventually I'll be able to afford the audio kit for my editing program. That way the audio doesn't sound like poop. Um, here I am just adding in. So their fins have a little red stripe towards the top which was hard to incorporate with her color palette, but I'd rather be true to the fish because that's the whole point is turning the fish into a merfolk than making it easy on myself. So I went in and I added the red stripe. Here I am darkening up the fro. Ah, oh, God, I really wish that instead of doing the black lines, I had just filled it in with a solid color, which I go back and kind of change in the post-production. So it looks a lot better in post. But in this case, I understood why I did that, but it ended up going against the color palette, so I should have waited before I made that decision. But again, time crunch, not feeling well. And then here I am adding in the skin tone. Uh, this was a little bit of a sticky situation because one, I wanted to make sure that you could tell that she was supposed to be a traditional Barbados woman, which Barbados people are mostly Afro-Latino, as far as I could tell. So I wanted to make it obvious that she was supposed to be darker skin, but also keep true to the color of the fish, which was a lighter blue. So the way I do that is I start off with this base of a kind of light blue, and here I am just adding a nice like tint to the wings because they are a little tinted blue and it adds interest. And then I mix up a darker color and I go in and add a gradient and then I leave, I believe I leave the palms. Yeah, so I just outline around the palms but I leave the palms lighter to try and communicate that she's supposed to be of a more <laughs> melanated skin tone, <laughs> if that makes sense. Good way to do a workaround to keep the original colors, but show that she's supposed to look like a Barbados woman. Barbadosian? Barbosian? I'm, I don't know if I'm being correct. I'm so sorry. And here we go with the tail. For the tail, I just decided to go with a more, like an indigo, like a blue indigo, I guess would be the color. It's not really on the fish so much, but because I used the fish's color for her skin, I wanted to make sure that it looked different enough that it wasn't the exact same color, but was similar enough. That way it doesn't all blend together. I probably could have switched the colors and done the fin that blue and then do the skin a bit darker, but I didn't think about that till literally this moment. I didn't plan the colors ahead of time as much as I did for the other pieces, which is unfortunate. I decided to go with the pink top. I think it was a good way to contrast the blue and also to go with that 
ready pink stripe that's in the fins. It was a really good way to tie that color in with the rest of the piece. I'm all about using colors multiple times throughout a piece. I think it helps tie everything together. If you have too many different colors going on, it can become visually cluttered. So having a limited color palette and reusing colors in different places can really help the reader stay focused on the design and it helps communicate what you're trying to get across a lot better. And I'm just putting in the blush. I did like the color I used for the blush. I thought it was a really pretty blue. Here I'm doing the flowers. I decided to do them a little more interpretive than literal. I thought it'd look better and also just be easier to do. Sorry about my mouse being on the screen. I don't, I usually take it off the screen. I do use a, I believe it's a razor. I can't tell. My boyfriend gave it to me. It changes colors and I don't know how to stop it from doing that because it is really annoying when <laughs> I'm trying to film and it's in the screen. It's a gamer mouse, um, very intense. It's funny because he gave me this mouse, but he uses like a really cheapy normal computer mouse on his gaming PC. I don't know. He's a weird guy, I love him. Helping me upgrade my PC here soon. Make editing a lot easier. I already did upgrade it, but he bought me some more parts to upgrade it, so that'll be nice. And I'm just darkening stuff up because like I said before, I like to do light washes. That way it's a little bit easier to build up color and get that nice smooth color all the way through. So I have to go through every once in a while once it's dry and build it back up. Shading the gold jewelry. I probably talked about this before, but in most cases you want to use a green to shade gold to give it that real gold effect. But because I am an illustrator and I have more cartoon style, I like to use orange. I think it just looks better. I don't think the green would really go well with my style. That's a very, that's a way to make it look realistic, but obviously I'm not going for that. And here I am just adding details to the fins. There are these little veins throughout the fins, so I decided to use a gel pen like I do for the background components. I think it came out pretty nice and it didn't bleed like I was afraid it would. do this for a while because my gel pen was running out of ink so I had to go over it a few times. I really like these gel pens. I use them for my bullet journaling which I will be putting out a video on around December. Uh, I was supposed to put one out earlier but the footage was bad. I don't know why I did that. I'm so sorry. I've been grueling to edit this video so just doing stupid stuff. Oh this is where I start to paint the background and then realize I forgot to outline it with the gel pen first. So I'm going back through with my different gel pens to outline the different components. Cause you know, I decided since I use the gel pen for the background piece of every other piece, it only makes sense to do it here. Like I said, at the beginning, I did a lot more background elements cause I wanted to make it obvious that she's jumping out of the water. And it's supposed to show that she's in a di completely different environment. I probably could have got away with just doing a sky and some rocks, but I decided to do the sun too. Whether it was too much or not, I'm not sure. I think it looks great, but the problem is I think it separates her a little bit too much from the others. I really like it. I really like the way I did the sun lines though. All right, baddies. It's the next day. Um, I was gonna finish this yesterday, but I had to stream. So I'm gonna pull up some YouTube. And we're finishing this today because I have to post it today. I just got the recommendation for a really nice looking house for so cheap, but it's in the middle of nowhere. So probably won't be moving there. Anyways, back into it. <laughs> We're doing the shading now. It's nothing too crazy interesting. There's a lot of pieces, so there is a lot of shading. But, you know, it's blue. Nothing crazy about blue. I use a lot of blue. adding some shading to the fins. I did like the color I used for the fins. I thought it helped bring them out. And he, I used that color specifically, so even if the gel pen did bleed, it looked like it was on purpose because it was the same color as the shading, which in some places it bled just a tiny bit, but not a whole lot. And I'm pretty sure I go and clean it up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I had trouble shading the tail because I wasn't quite sure what 
to do for the others I think it's a little more obvious on where I should apply shading but like this one hard shading didn't feel right so I kind of went with a gradient and I didn't do it the way I usually do it so it came out a little patchy in the end it doesn't look terrible but I definitely could have done it better this one was difficult because I did the roses in watercolor and you have to be careful not to reactivate your watercolor which I think I did just a tiny bit, which sucks. But, you know, I know better for next time to either give it more dry time or, you know, just do it in gel pen. And here I am darkening up where the roses were. That way it looks like they also got shaded over because I realized that the rose color I used was pretty much the same darkness as the shading color. So it didn't really look like they got shaded. And I did the water. I had fun doing the water. I like doing bulbous water, you know, like Ghibli tears and stuff. Just fun. Really easy way to apply highlights is just to not fill in areas with your watercolor instead of going back through with white gel pen. I'm sure I've mentioned that before, but I do that a lot with my shading. When I go through for the second pass to kind of darken up my lines, Instead of going through with the second pass all the way, I just leave like pieces, like like circles left out to show a highlight. It looks nice and it adds a nice layered effect. And I'm just doing the sky now. Nothing crazy, just a blue. Obviously leaving the clouds white. Doing it in big, oops, sorry. Doing it in big chunks. That way it'll lay down evenly. I also tried to use a color that wasn't too similar to like the skin tone or the blues in the wings because I wanted it to stand out. Which is very hard because there's so many different blues in this piece that it, it <laughs> ended up blending in anyways. Here you can see I forgot to do the rock. Uh, I'm sure if I didn't mention it, somebody else would. I'm doing that shading technique I just talked about with leaving the patches to make it a natural highlight or whatever. It's going to bother me too, okay? You're not the only one. I do go back and shade the rock. I promise. <laughs> it doesn't stay white forever. Alright, it's dry. We've zoomed in a bit. Let's do the highlights. Here I am adding some extra highlights to the water. I smudged out the white lines to try and make it look like waves. I don't think it was successful, but I got the idea. I did the same on the rocks. And now I'm just adding some highlights on the fins. It was important to add them on the fins just because I wanted them to seem transparent, because they are transparent. So I really should have probably done a little more work so you could see the rock through and stuff. As you can see, my camera's doing that autofocus thing again. Yeah, like I said, video's a mess. Highlights for this one took a bit because there's so many different details. I also did the highlights on the hair. Didn't like that. Really wish I didn't do it like that, but <laughs> what are you going to do? Highlights on the eyes kind of overtook the entire eye, which is, which is the difficulty when you're working with a smaller canvas. The nice thing about digital is you can use, you don't have to use a white highlight. I find digital can be kind of limiting unless you plan out ahead of time where highlights are going to be with your paint because, you know, you'd have to plan out to leave that space blank or to specifically input a, a highlight, but with watercolor, you know, it's just a little bit harder. With stuff like acrylic, it's a little easier since, oh look, here I am, I told you, I'm painting the rock. But with the stuff like acrylic, it's a little easier to plan out. Highlights because you can put them in afterwards, but with watercolor, you have to work lightest to dark. Oh, and I added some sparkles to the the shirt. I think it really pulled it together with how much white I was using. It was nice. You could see me, like, really thinking about the way I did the face and how much I don't like it. <laughs> I am glad I went through and changed it. It was a lot of work, but it was definitely worth it. 
if I had planned ahead more, I could have done like a really cool yellow gradient going over the whole piece too for the sun. And I just added some extra clouds with the white gel pen. It's supposed to be like way off in the distance so you can't see them. And here I am pulling up the tape. My favorite part. <laughs> kind of difficult when you have pieces that have a lot of cutouts. Yeah, and as you can see, it does touch the edge, but I do fix that in post. And she is done. I'm not the most proud of her. She's not my favorite, but she's done, and that's what matters. Meet the flying fish of Barbados. All right, and then I'll do the outro. Last but not least, the outro for the flying car. Now that you won't see this last, I just realized because the blue ring octopus is last in the series, but I filmed this last because I'm stupid. Anyways, ba -ba, here's the finished piece. I'm really proud of the extra work I did on the background. You know, I think it helps to solidify that she is jumping out of the water. Of course, I wish I pushed the pose a little bit more, but I very much enjoyed it. Like I said, she's the one I did the most digital editing on because I don't know if I talk about this in the voiceover but here's what she looks like after the digital editing I changed the afro to be more blue and I completely changed the mouth and face shape I edited the eyes it looks like the nose but mostly the mouth mainly because I just didn't like how flat the closed mouth looked I think I did because even though she's turned to the side I did the lips kind of the same shape all around and it made it look very flat and it also didn't look like that jumping out of the water, really excited expression that I wanted. So I went through and I changed it a little bit and you can see that. Just as the others, she is available as a digital print as well as a sticker on my Etsy, link in the description down below. And if you like what you see there, I have other social media. I post on Instagram once a week. I post here once a week and I post on TikTok once a day. I post on Twitter when I remember it exists. In the description, you will also find any of the supplies I use as well as any inspiration or references that you may need. Feel free to leave a like and a comment, maybe asking questions, maybe tell me what you wanna see next. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope you're having a wonderful day slash night, whatever it is, wherever you are. Bye-bye.